We have to head back to Otter Creek. We have our final court hearing against the corrupt administration of Otter Creek. Rust the sus, and we've got Mary Mary. The consequences of everything you've done is going to be scary. I gotta admit, it's gonna be a little tough leaving a paradise such as this. And it only gets more beautiful every time I go outside and look around. And no doubt you've wanted to take a peek around as well. Not only that, everything that's going on in Otter Creek. You got questions? We're gonna try and give you your answers. Yaya wants to know, were you continued to be charged for water after you disconnected from the city water source? There's so many comments here, I don't expect my question to be seen, but it's worth a try. Well, yeah, yeah, your question number one. Okay, so number one, we never disconnected from the city water source. We actually connected into the city water source. We spent roughly $25,000 to get in a meter, to get in pipelines, to get in a filtration system so that we could have the potentially cleanest water possible for Georgia's health. It was destroying her skin, her hair, and all kinds of other things. That's part of her health issues on her journey with cancer. Ted Case wants to know, is that Mr. Fuller sitting at the table? Look, Buck, right here. Is that Mr. Fuller sitting at the table when Russ illegally dismisses the meeting? Thank you for your anticipated cooperation and your prompt attention in this matter. Other public now, comments is we're going to have a meet the now, candidate. It's been changed from the church to Zim Pageant's house, March 23rd at 6 p.m. You requested, you requested a two-inch meter. Your plumber called me personally. I find it funny that Mr. Fuller, who was hired on as a code and building inspector, sat at the meeting, had nothing at all to say about the water meter situation, the two-inch pipe, which that's what he's hired for, right? Well, he didn't say anything. And when Russ brought the issue up, or any other issue, such as the lack and disregard for parliamentary procedure, but now he suddenly finds his voice in every town hall meeting. Well, the answer is yes. That is Mr. Fuller sitting at the table. Now, he was not voted in as a council member, but for some reason, Russ continued to put him at the table, which I find odd, because Russ won't even talk to Belinda now at the table, where most clerks actually run the show. They are the operations manager of a city or a town or a village. And yet, here's Russell with Mr. Fuller at the table. No problem with that whatsoever, but he's got a problem with Belinda? Kane Oliver says, after seeing the last video where we did a recap of everything that's happened to us in Otter Creek, goes, it's crazy how much younger Jeremy looks three years ago. Well, Kane, there's reasons for that. Number one, stress level. Otter Creek has increased our stress level like crazy. And you know what stress does to your body. But thankfully, we have Hale's headquarters where we have rest and respite, and, and we can get away from all of that. We have not had a single issue whatsoever here where we live in Hale's headquarters. Now, number two, the reason is I'm in my upper 40s now. I'm 46. Back then, uh, you know, 43, maybe 42. You know, I'm gonna have to consult Mary on the math of how old I was back then. The reality is your body gets older and you progress a little bit a little bit faster once you get up in those 40s. So some of the things that have happened, obviously I've got male pattern baldness here. I've, I've got a little baldness going there. I uh, actually have grays coming in in my beard now, believe it or not. I'm starting to, to actually twin George. I've got grays coming in on the side. Um, you know, probably some marks here from stress instead of just smile marks, but I am looking older because I am older and the stress level has been at an all-time high. Mad Mike wants to know, I'm wondering why the new mayor and her husband, they're not suing the town and Russ the Sus, after he uh, propositioned her for adult time, then firing her husband for not going along with it, shaking my head. Mad Mike, the world that we live in follows order and control and logic, right? And part of that that has been established is the legal system. Now, that's the positive thing that, that there are intelligent individuals with knowledge and wisdom that are running the legal system. The downside of that is it costs money. 
lawyers, courts, judge, all the clerk, you name it, you name it. There's so many people tied up with it. It's just a money grab. And so to actually pursue things legally, you have to, number one, have the money. And then number two, you have to want to spend the money. Now, I have no doubt that Madam Mayor Therese and her husband have the money. But who wants to spend frivolous money in court? Unless you go, man, this is something that I am not going to continue to let happen to myself or to an entire town. If you're somebody like me that stands on principles so much and you go, I don't care. I'm wasting thousands. But in the end, it's going to help a hundred people, then you go ahead and you move forward with it. It all comes down to a dollar issue. Do you have it? Do you want to spend it? And if you do want to spend it, is it worth it in the end? Because remember, I'm going to get very little out of this. What's important is what the townspeople get out of this. The corruption is gone. Things are done right. They're not stolen from. They're not lied to anymore. There's no more cover-ups. We finally know everything. It's out in the open. Everything's transparent. Angela says, at the last council meeting, didn't someone say there was only like 47 houses in that town? So all the dumping, Jeremy, that was happening on your property, which by the way, there are those that claim they live in Otter Creek and that I've never done anything to clean up Otter Creek. I mean, I've only invested over a million dollars into multiple properties and years of my time cleaning them up. Not to mention when people were using my property as a physical dump probably him as well but I digress okay so where's all the dumping coming from is it from those 47 houses and are there any bylaws for illegal dumping how about putting security cameras up okay this is a big question number one where's the dumping coming from well the dumping was coming from the neighbors the neighbors had actually encroached so far on the property they even put a fence up as you viewed in that actual video Jeez. this road being leased by the cell tower company you can see the garbage just everywhere, everywhere. This is just absolutely insane. This is beyond hoarding. This is my property. This is my property. This is my property. which that fence was all taken down and portion of their house was encroaching on the property, which had to be cut back and moved back onto their property. Are the laws in regards to that in Otter Creek? Yes, there's dumping laws all over in Florida. So I think it's a minimum $500 fine. But individuals were just coming in and dumping anything they wanted. With so many individuals coming in to purchase, um, I don't wanna say the D word, but, um, well, okay, let's just say it drugs then more individuals found out that they could come and they it just got all trashy completely and totally trashy okay so why didn't you have cameras up there well in a video just about a week ago we shared with you we did have a camera there and Kenny Jr who is known for his drug usage and his abusage and with his influence over another town miner Abel they broke our camera on purpose we did not pursue it legally we did not press charges because Abel was a minor at that point in time. Abel has his own set of problems, and they are huge in what he has to deal with and what he's done with the consequences of his own life. We didn't add one more. Now, if he were to do it again, we absolutely would press charges, and he's well aware of that at this point in time. Kevin Klein wants to know, Jeremy, who watches your property when you're gone, when you're not there? It looks like you would need an army. Okay, well, I can share this. Number one, we don't have an army. Number two, we do spend a entirely way too much on security but if we told you everybody that was watching the property that would actually diminish our security right you know we've got cameras you know we've got individuals and that's probably suffice to say what needs to be said now here at Hales headquarters we have a pretty good relationship with the local police department as well and therefore they will be watching the property they will keep us on their rounds as well we have cameras everywhere we have employees we have security in place so while now, we haven't yet hired the army, although I'm sure there's somebody out there that probably is going to say that the army does work for me uh, because they came to Otter Creek and passed out food after the hurricane, which the, the army doesn't work for me. As a matter of fact, um, there's only one person in Otter Creek that actually works for me. 
They're a resident now because we hired that individual. She moved to Otter Creek and now she works for me. Anybody else is a volunteer and they just, we're friends, we're neighbors. We have a good time in a, in a great neighborhood. Grandma Honey wants to know, why haven't I seen anything in regards to the community garage sale? You didn't go live, you didn't share a video, there was games, there was activities, there was prizes, there was Dairy Queen gift cards given away for costume prizes. Why haven't you shown any of it? Well, unfortunately, we weren't able to actually be there. We're still here at Hales headquarters. We're waiting for the judgment paperwork in regards to our five-year, 500-foot protection orders against John Crow and Lynette until we have those in hand and yes we have to wait for them to be served to us in hand then we can leave we'll get on the road and we'll head straight to Otter Creek and we'll get them registered with the Levy County Sheriff Big Daddy wants to know Jeremy why didn't you use copper piping for the indoor plumbing job all right Big Daddy number one we bought the property not for the house that's on the property we brought the property for the actual property we're going to build our own house on the property and originally i told george hey i'm just going to bulldoze this house and she said no no let's turn it into a museum so i'm not going to spend a lot of money on copper when i can spend money on plastic piping that does the job if not even better than copper at a huge fraction of the cost so you're not gonna you're not gonna gold plate a turd and then think it's not gonna be a turd anymore, right? Now the house is still okay, and George and I live comfortably in the house. But I, I got it, it's not this house, okay? I, I, not that not that George and I are bougie by any stretch of the imagination. As a matter of fact, we would have never, ever, ever in a million years even moved here unless we had to for our own public safety and security. Our security became a huge issue once Lynette and John Crook moved in across the street. And we realized very quickly that our lives were not private anymore, even though we put information out publicly, privacy is a premium for us. And that people would find us and they would buy property across the street from us and they would beg from us and we're not okay with that. Here, nobody can be near us at any point in time for any reason unless we invite them in. That's why we live here. Now, we're attempting to do the same things in Otter Creek. We have a long way to go, and we're not putting in copper. It costs too much money. Carrie wants to know, did you get the five year? Well, it's really, it's carried. I, I bet you it's carried D. It could be Carrie D. Did you get the five year? Says, I'm hoping. Okay, well, Carrie, the world is hoping. Now keep in mind with that five year, wherever we are, they can't be. So let's say they happen to be at Walmart and then 10 minutes later, George and I show up at Walmart. They must leave immediately. It is not first to get there gets to stay there. This is not a dual party restraining order. This is against them they cannot be where we're at so number one we know they won't be at any more town hall meetings and if they do show they'll be arrested and jailed ultimately we think that's going to happen within a week of us getting there anyway they have not stopped posting online they have to stop posting online they have to delete everything they posted online and it's not stopped it's only increased so i think the way this is going to go is more than a five year they might get 10 maybe 20 hopefully 30. They'll have three hots and a cot, and let's face it, that's better than the way they live right now. Pikastow, I probably said that wrong, but wants to know, says, my question is, if you have well water, why didn't you disconnect from the town water system and then tell them, sure, disconnect me. I don't need your stinking water. Well, the answer is pretty simple. Uh, before, I, before I share it with you, George, what color are all these? They look orange oh with a tint of yellow and here, red. Here, here, here. Come on over here. Maybe I can twist it. Look at that. Holy cow. It's beautiful. Wow. Man alive. Okay. We definitely love this time of year. So the wells were already drilled on the property once we actually got to the property. There are two wells. One feeds the house and then one feeds what we would say the pond area and the barn area. Okay. So those wells are very, very, very high in iron. Not very good to drink whatsoever. I mean, the quality of water in Florida is all about location where you're at. 
and we're in a pretty bad location for quality of water. We want that water for our animals. We want that water for washing the tractor, for filling the pond if needed. We don't want that water for drinking and for showering. So we want to be connected to what is cleaner water, which is debatable whether that's actually cleaner water or not from the town. We want both. We've got to have both. Now, obviously, we want the cleanest water, right? For George's sake, we want the cleanest water. We just don't have it yet. So we hooked up in hopes of having the cleanest water possible. And we do believe we have the cleanest water possible with our own filtration system here in Otter Creek. But we're hoping that it can get even better and better and better with the new administration. User, a bunch of letters and a bunch of numbers. Mary's not good with numbers. You might want to just go all letters, but George can't read and neither can I. All right, you know what? Just, I don't know, do whatever you want to do. But it says this, Jeremy, how do you deal with all of this? This absolutely stupid crap. That's not CPAP, that's C-RAP. Uh, maybe I'm stupid, but this whole thing is insane. I guess maybe I'm the crazy one. So the way that we deal with it, number one, is we give people opportunity and time to correct it. So in the case of Lynette and John Crook, they went for months and months and months posting and saying garbage about us and other people. And we gave them an opportunity to just stop, no response. Same thing we did with Otter Creek. I actually went a month before I actually went in and confronted Mary in regards to my bill and the thievery of it. And then I gave him an opportunity, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing, give him a timeline. And if you don't do it by this timeline, there are consequences and hold them to those consequences. Now in this case, it's legal consequences, but we never wanted to be involved in legal consequences. How do we deal with it? Most of the time we laugh. I mean, the reality is some of it is scary, some of it's pathetic, some of it is totally and completely insane. So one of the ways we deal with it, I mean, look around, George, just do a pan. Look at all the reds, all the oranges, all the yellows, all the beauty of this place. This is a way that we deal with it. We get away and we escape and we detach from it and then we deal with it when it has to be dealt with again. Now, unfortunately, we got to go deal with it all again. We don't want to deal with it. We should have never been in a place in our position to have or have to deal with it. But once it's done, it's done. And then hopefully it never happens again. But the only way to make sure this stuff never happens again, that means you get rid of Russ the Sus and Don the Cons and Mary Marys and Laura Motts and Lynettes and John Crooks. You keep the good people. Teresa Omen says, oh my goodness. They made your property look like a dang junkyard. I forgot how bad it was. It was interesting to go back and see exactly what happened. How can anyone want to live in a town so corrupt? I'm so happy you're changing this. Sorry you both had to go through so much. God bless you. Okay, first of all, yes, they utilized part of our property as a junkyard. There's no doubt whatsoever. And it took, so far, George and I almost four years to clean up combined 75 acres. Now combined what we have so far, we've got the ranch, we've got the old church, and we now have the old schoolhouse. Combined for almost four years, we've been cleaning all of those properties up. And we're almost, almost done on the ranch, 70 acres. We have one more spot where we found they were dumping. Every time we think we're done, then we find another spot. That means daily trips to the dump which everybody who lived there could have done in the first place, right? They could have taken it to the dump. They could have got a dumpster. They could have hauled it. They could have... The mentality. It's the mentality. It's the thought process. Nobody taught these people how to care for something. Nobody taught these people to care for something. So how can somebody stay in a town like this? Well, number one, for George and I, it was a business plan. We wanted to be in the center hub of the major cities, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, for auctions so we can buy and then resell. For us, it was a genius business plan. And it is the perfect location. If anybody needs to be in the city, in the middle of those major cities, it is a perfect location. And you got Cedar Key right there on the Gulf. It doesn't get any better. But these people don't even understand what they have, unfortunately. Now, I'm not talking about all of the residents. I'm not talking about the vast majority of the residents. I'm talking about the residents who trash everything. Now, one of the things you can see, no garbage. 
As much garbage that George and I deal with on a daily basis, buying storage units, you will not find any garbage. Our garbage goes to the dump. Our garbage goes with the garbage men and the garbage women that pick it up. So who would want to live in a place so corrupt? We absolutely want to. It is the perfect location, absolutely perfect location for what we do and for our business model. Now, we're not the ones that are responsible for cleaning it up. We're responsible for cleaning up our own properties. We're not the ones responsible for cleaning up Town Hall. The people have voted and said they don't want any more corruption from Russ. It was Mary who stepped down after she battered me. It was other individuals that are being held responsible. George and I are just a small piece in this huge big picture and the future of Otter Creek. And it's looking brighter all the time because people are caring and they want to do something positive. Gifted by God said, hey, whatever happened to your buddy with the uh, animals, we miss them. Well, Gifted by God, here's what happens with George and I on YouTube. One of the things that we found out real quick is people love to use each other to gain notoriety, uh, clicks, to gain fame, to gain, and we're not about that. We just started scrapbooking our lives, period. Now, we've been fortunate enough to be one of the largest channels in the top half of 1% of all the channels on YouTube. Yeah, it's that big. And you look at bigger channels that are like huge at the top and the top and you go, what the hell is this pretty small? And the reality is it is big and it is small. And there are those who want to use us and our platform to advance themselves instead of just being friends. And so that individual, as, long as others have as well, we learned this through our process and our journey in YouTube. They will try and use you and get whatever they can and then stab you in the back. That's the reality. Those who you see us filming with on our channel, they have all been told the same thing. If you ever do anything to damage the relationship, if you ever do anything behind our back, we will no longer film with you. We will cut you off. You are toxic. And those individuals were toxic that you saw us film with in the past and then now we don't anymore. They're toxic. They did something to destroy that relationship. And that individual did some really trashy stuff to destroy that relationship. We tell everybody the same thing to the point now where we will not pull in somebody new and actually film with them. So you see us filming with individuals at the schoolhouse and in Otter Creek or up at Hales headquarters. Those are people who understand our guidelines and what our boundaries are. And by the way, boundaries are extremely healthy to have in relationships, right? We have boundaries and we operate within those boundaries. And if those individuals can't or won't operate in those boundaries, we don't associate with them on camera. Now we could still associate with them off camera, but in this situation, neither takes place with that individual he burnt the bridge that bad Rolly Brewer wants to know two questions oh man hitting me with a two-parter here by the way if you've got questions you can submit them in the comments George and I will try and answer them the best of our ability question number one how confident are you that the state of Florida is going to see this through and bring charges if warranted Corruption doesn't stop at city government. It's everywhere. Okay, confidence in the state of Florida. Uh, we are confident in justice. We know it moves slowly. And especially when you have a small rinky-dink town that very few people are ever going to care about. There's, it's not big enough for people to put emphasis and attention on, but it will get the attention that it needs. It's not going to be the first priority for the state. But the state is making it a priority. There are individuals coming from Tallahassee. They are doing interviews and they are investigating everything. So we are confident that the state is moving forward. Now, the aspect of your question that said, are you confident that the state is going to see this through and bring charges if warranted? So you said if warranted. So in what I have seen and witnessed and have all information and evidence of, Charges are absolutely 100% warranted, but I don't make that decision. That's the state's decision. So how confident am I that they are gonna bring charges? I'm seeing it happen almost every single day in Florida and other states where mayors and clerks are being arrested, being jailed 25 years, 30 years for all the same stuff. So my confidence level going into this is pretty high. 
okay? But that doesn't mean anything because I'm not the one that makes the decisions. Ultimately, it's gonna be the investigators from the state, right? So my confidence level though is, is pretty high. George, what's your confidence level while I look at question number two? Mm, I hope that justice will be served. Okay, she did not answer. All right, number two, should charges be brought against the crime bra boss Russ or Lackey Don? What's the likelihood that one of them will flip and turn state's evidence against the others to save their own butt? All right, number two. What's, let's just emphasize on what's the chances of them flipping to save themselves. I think that is a 110% possibility on Laura Mott, who's gonna try and flip and save herself and say that Russ told me to do this with the water. And Russ is going to flip on Laura Mott and say, I didn't have anything to do with this. Laura did this all on herself. And I think Mary's gonna state, Russ is the boss, he told me to do it and I did whatever he told me to do. And Russell and Laura are gonna say, we didn't tell her to do anything. She did this all of her own. And Don's gonna go, can you repeat that? What? I never got any paperwork on this. I'm just seeing this for the first time ever. You mean to tell me we've all been duped? Jerry Turner wants to know, do you have any plans to get rid of the ghost at the haunted schoolhouse? All right, some may not even understand Jerry's question, so let me put it in perspective for you. When we bought the schoolhouse, those who sold it to us told us a number of different stories. So number one, they have had sightings of a child with a red ball. Almost all of them, all who worked in the old schoolhouse, made mention of a child and this red ball that would appear and child voices. Now they also shared with us, and there is a video of this, and if you're in our member levels and if you're at our highest member level, there's a whole video of their testimony and sharing this with all of you. There's also, was it a woman in a red dress, George? Was uh -huh. that? Yes. Okay, so there was a red dress, red ball with the child, voices from the child, doors that would open and close. For example, the maintenance man who was who was married, is married to the former executive director, well, still executive director, but former at that location. Uh, he, all of a sudden, heard doors opening and closing and looking all around, there was absolutely nobody there. There was, there was a computer that was logged into as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was a computer that was logged into. And um, so there's all kinds of stories that they shared with us and they, they were not joking. And, um, and they straight up asked us, have you heard, seen anything? And the answer is for George and I and our employees, no, nothing, nothing whatsoever. So here's where I stand on this. If you believe in ghosts, you're going to hear things that confirm your belief or see things that confirm your belief. Now, I do believe that when we die, our soul goes to one of two places. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you head to heaven. And that's what saves you, that relationship. If you don't, you head to hell. And you needed that relationship. Now, I do believe in demonic forces, and, and I have yet to see anything in regards to that anywhere near the schoolhouse. Now, I was in full-time ministry for quite some while, and I've seen evidence of demonic forces and possession in full-time ministry, but never in any building I've ever owned, and almost every building I've owned, people have told me, oh no, it's haunted, it's haunted, it's haunted. Uh, people have even asked us if this house that we live in, in Hale's headquarters, is haunted. Why? Because the doors would randomly open. Well, the doors would randomly open because the doors were sagging because they're wood, and that's what happens with temperatures, and the strike plate needed to be lined up with the actual door latch. Guess what happens now? No doors do that. Now doors still do that at the schoolhouse because I haven't lined up all the strike plates. That's just as part of aging building. So are we gonna get rid of the ghost? Well, you'd have to actually have them. Now we have had close friends come in and video the ghost in the schoolhouse. I haven't watched their full video. We told them the stories and then we went to bed and they had a ton of fun. Linda Curtis wants to know, is Russ the sus married? Linda, you're not going to believe me, but the answer is yes, and for a very, very long time. Now, when we got to Otter Creek, and when we've been in other surrounding areas, and you say Otter Creek, we always get the same thing, Russ the Suss's reputation. We have yet to actually meet one person, not even one person, that has ever said anything positive about Russ the Suss. Now, here's where it flips. I have not met his wife. I have seen his wife. I have not met his wife. 
and we have yet to meet one person that has anything negative to say about his wife. Like this is polar opposites. You have this evil individual, this corrupt individual with uh, wanting to abuse his own power for adult favors and this loving, sweet woman who many have said to us, we have no idea why she has tolerated or put up with him except for the fact that she loves God and her vow before God to him. Masjolin, I'm trying to make it into one word, uh, wants to know questions. Uh oh, here we go. Questions. Okay, not questions. Plural. How does this affect the turtle people owning property across the road from your property in Otter Creek? So what they're asking is, with a restraining order, five year, 500 feet, how does that affect them? So number one, they can still own the property, okay? They purchased property on purpose right next to us, literally across the street from us, property that we must drive down to get certain places. Now, they don't have to drive past us. We have to drive past them. So how does that affect them? They can still own it. Uh, the question goes on, but I mean by this is if you need to go down the road in front of your property to get to town or whatever you need to go, you pass with a, within 500 feet of their property line. Does that mean they're outside of their property that they have to leave, go inside until you're past their property? Okay, to the letter of the law, yes. If we are driving and they know we are passing them, which trust me, they know our vehicles, they are to go inside their home. Now that becomes an issue because number one, they don't have a home. They're living illegally in a shed. Now there is a camper, that camper is illegally on the property against Florida statutes and laws as well. So they must go inside somewhere. Is it the camper? Is it the shed, what they call their home? Then they must go inside. That is the letter of the law. And we will continue every single time we drive by, we will be filming. Every single time we will be filming. One slip up, we will be reporting. What happens if you're outside on your property close to the road and they need to go past the road to go to their property? Well, that would never happen. Now, if we're out in front of our property, which is right in front of their property, they have to stay and wait. They're supposed to be inside. When we leave, they can leave and go do whatever they need to do. Remember, these are the consequences of their actions. These aren't the consequences of our actions. So if we're out in front of our property and let's say it's 210 and we're metal detecting or we're cutting trees or we're trimming it back and they have to be somewhere at 230, they can not come out or be near us. That's the letter of the law. Now they may go, but we had an appointment and da da da. You did what you did. These are the consequences of your life decisions. Gregory Orr says, this has been the most interesting and informative video recap to the present day. Question, that was in regards to a video that we just recapped everything, not even everything, maybe 50% of what's happened to us in Otter Creek since we got there. With numerous wells on your property, have you experienced any sinkholes? Gregory, there are two wells on the property. Now we do know that up front, right across from Lynette and John Crook, there are actually three more utility hookups. There's supposed to be three wellheads. There's supposed to be three septics. There's supposed to be three areas where power was there. There, In the old days, there used to be three trailers there, or maybe they weren't trailers. Maybe they were mobile homes. Now, George and I have found remnants of some of them, and that's in a previous video on the channel. We have found the septic tank. We found a power pole and things along those lines. There's supposed to be concrete stairs and everything there. But to our knowledge, we have only found the two wellheads so far. We have not seen anything in regards to the sinkholes. Now we've been on the vast majority of the property. I can't say we've been on every inch of the property. We really focus on the back 40 acres. The front 40, we don't mess around with too much because we're in the back already and we really bought the property for the creek and the beauty in the back. And that's in the back 40 acres. So we know the back 40 acres like the back of our hands. You could, you could blindfold us, twist us around and let us go. We'll know exactly where we're at and where things are back there. In the front of the property, it's pretty much all the same. You just look towards the cell tower, you know where you're at, cell tower is your reference point. 
I haven't seen anything that looks like a sinkhole whatsoever. We do have cypress areas. We do have, uh, we do have mosquito ditches where the county used to come in and do mosquito control with ditches. George and I want to put in a full 10 acre lake. So that ditch is going to be absolutely nothing once we have a 10 acre pond or a lake in there. Pippa K says, if you have your own wells on your own property, couldn't you just filter the water to make it fit for drinking? I know you said you connected to Town Hall of Otter Creek to help them and that all the money goes to the pipeline and your property and it was so expensive. All right, so Pippa K, number one, we already put 25 grand into getting town water into the ranch house. So could we have put 25,000 into filtering our well water? Yep. Would we have gotten uh, cleaner water than what the town is giving us? We don't know. Now, whenever, let me back up a little bit. We had no idea the town water was nasty, okay? So when you move into an area and you go, hey, let's hook up to the town or to the city, to the water, you expect what? Clean water, all right? I've already invested almost $25,000, if not even a little bit over, to get clean water that I expected to be clean from a town. We had no idea we weren't getting any better water than we were getting from our wells. So from the onset, when you're moving into a place and you're going, oh, well, we could just cook, hook up to the town and we could have clean water versus let's build our own $25,000 filtration system. But now we're going to have to move that into a new house once we move a new house. That's a lot of expenses and moving and da, 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 da. What we did did is piped in and were piped and ready for the new house. So that seemed like the better solution because when you move somewhere, you expect to have clean water, right? So could we have done it? Yeah. But who in the right mind thinks, oh, I'm going to get filthy water from the town once I pay all this money to connect to it. Don't you think the town should be responsible to tell us, hey, um, our water is horrible. You sure you want to do this? I'll bet you $50 it'll pass any, any test you put it through. <laughs> Katie Miller wants to know, in that recap video where you showed everything and when you were actually reading the information that you want for the information request to arrest the sus and Mary Mary, did Lynette offer to give you her three minutes in public comments? Good catch there, Katie. Yeah, Lynette was in there. This is when Lynette was completely and totally against Rust the Sus, where they were putting up illegal signs all over. Not illegal because they were putting them up. It was illegal where they were putting them. They had no authority. And it was illegal because they're a 501c3. Their entire property is part of their 501c3. And therefore, they cannot be for or against any candidate in any election for anything. And yet, they're posting stuff everywhere illegally. And in that meeting, you absolutely heard heard Lynette say, I'll give him my three minutes. But remember, you've also heard Lynette say to Russ, need anything else from me, Russ? Firefighter wants to know, Jeremy, whatever happened to all the check balms, he says balms, I'm pretty think, I think he means check valves that were never installed in any of the meters in that town. They legally have to be put on. What's up with that, please? Okay. So remember in the bylaws, in the charter, and in the resolutions and the ordinances and all of that, there is written that the town must supply check valves for every single resident. Now you've heard Gail say that there's 45 houses in Otter Creek. Well, we know they're one down because of us. Now they're at 44. We actually know another resident because of our video went ahead and put in a check valve as well. So now they're at 43. What happened to them and don't they legally have to put them on? They are in a legal liable situation if they don't put them on. Any one of the residents or all of the residents could file a lawsuit and state that they are not following their own legislation or their own charter and they could file suit because the town has not done it. Now, you have to get to a point as well and go, can the town even do it? The answer is no, the town can't afford a police department. Town can't afford a fire department. Town can't afford street lights. Town can't afford, I mean, honestly, what can the town afford? Well, the town couldn't afford to even put Russ the Sus as the mayor because he put them in a legally liable situation. They're now in a lawsuit and who knows what they're gonna lose because of it. Lyle's got a good question. He says, I'm wondering, Jeremy, when Russ said your plumber called me, remember when Russ said, your plumber called me personally. personally. 
Uh, it seems to me you had said months ago you had to use a town approved plumber. Wouldn't that make it his plumber? Okay, so let's back up a little bit. So you've seen a couple different plumbers and number one, you've seen Lonnie. Lonnie had, does some plumbing. Lonnie and his son actually installed our check valve. Okay, but Lonnie is more of water treatment. He's a chemist. So it's the chemistry involved in treating the water and trying to make it as clean as possible. Lonnie does that for Otter Creek and he does that for other towns as well, such as Bronson, which is the town that we're trying to get clean water from. That side over east of Route 19, Highway 19, they got sweet, clean water, no problems. And they can plumb it right over to Otter Creek just takes millions and millions and millions of excavation and laying lines, right? I mean, no big deal. It's obviously a big deal and it's gonna take some time. Which, that previous question where they said, well, why didn't you just treat your own water? Well, eventually everything's going to develop in the area. Think of it as a monopoly board. You're playing monopoly, one thing gets bought up, another thing gets bought up, another thing, and then all of a sudden, there's very few things to buy up on the monopoly board. Florida is the monopoly board. There's only one area left undeveloped we're living in it. And so we were smart to actually get a huge chunk of piece of property in it. You're gonna get clean water coming in. You're gonna get sewer. And eventually you're going to have to hook up into that water and into that sewer. That's a good thing for everybody. The other plumber who put in our lines all the way back to the house that hooked us up into the town water, that was a whole nother outfit there. And that is a local plumber of very few that actually service the area anymore. And so he is aware of what's happened in Otter Creek. Uh, there have been individuals that have told him personally, it wasn't us, it was other individuals that we know. And he's had questions, asked questions. He knows everything that the town has done to us and he knows what we've had to go through. And he has shared his own concern in regards to that. So was it Russ the Suss's plumber? Well, Lonnie does work for the town. So you could say Lonnie did work for Russ the Sus, but we didn't have Lonnie do the work till well after all of this started. The other plumber was a competitor and has been a competitor for Russell's own plumbing business. So I guarantee you, they, he, he was not Russ the Sus's plumber. Nahern says, if Liabetes was such a fan before all of this, how could she not know that you and the lovely George, oh my goodness, the lovely George Ooh. would not hold her accountable for her actions? All I can say is stupid people do stupid things and they win stupid prizes because of it. Pamela wants to know, are you gonna let Mary go to jail? Now, Pamela's question probably comes out of the aspect that with the battery charges, we were okay with the state actually dropping those charges based on Mary's age, based on Mary's current health, she had a stroke, and based on it wasn't very physically harming, okay? So when they contacted us, we said, yeah, that's fine. We can go ahead, we can drop those charges. And we specifically stated she has much, much bigger things in coming down her way. And so these are the things that are coming her way, the illegal things, the corruption done in the town. So are we gonna let Mary go to jail or keep her out of jail? That's no longer has anything to do with us. The state will determine all of that. And age should not ever have a factor in the aspect of right or wrong. Catherine's got a question about Jimmy. Uh, she says this, and Mary Mary would look you dead straight in the face and lie about it. She did a lot of lying to us. There's no doubt whatsoever she's a pathological liar and nobody can ever convince me of anything else. From the start, it was crazy. And right after you'd gotten rid of the other nightmare in Ohio, that's true, it was Marilyn was the nightmare. And uh, Mary makes Marilyn look like cakewalk, doesn't she? And I'm surprised you don't have PTSD or beautiful George doesn't have it. My nerves are certainly raw. Watching this, how is Jimmy doing? And hope he's doing well. How are the neighbors that were encroaching doing? Did that get all straightened out? All right, let's start with Jimmy. So Jimmy's texted me a couple times since we haven't been there this past summer. Jimmy's doing really well. His son just won a major, major welding competition. Like his son is an artist. Like you, you wouldn't believe the things that he makes out of metal. It's, he is very talented. It is, it is incredible. It will blow your mind. <laughs> and it's going to because last we heard Remember that wooden finger that our neighbors, the encroaching neighbors made? Well, 
He's Jimmy's gonna son replicate it. is replicating it out of metal. Okay, so how are the neighbors that we're encroaching doing? So we keep very little contact with those individuals. Uh, obviously, they made it extremely stressful when we arrived to Otter Creek. And so um, as far as how they're doing, they're no longer encroaching. We can tell you that. Uh, I'm sure they don't like a camera um, because they've already been caught doing things wrong once already. Who likes to be caught twice or three times? But um, the, the reality is we do have some incredible folks in Otter Creek. They may not live directly next to us or across the street from us, but we've got some beautiful people on our road, such as Gail. You know Council Member Gail. She's incredible. M. Danina. I'm sure I said that wrong, but I've got the question right. She says, or he says, legit question. Is Russ's cell phone owned by the city? Question mark. If not, I don't see why you should get a personal cell phone messages. Well, I don't see why you don't understand the law. If Russ the Sus is using his personal cell phone and he is employed by the town and he's using his cell phone for town business, it now becomes property of the town. That is the law. If you use your personal cell phone, your personal emails, your personal, your personal, your personal to conduct any town business, any government business. Come on, Hillary Clinton got busted for all this. You should know this. This has been in the news forever. Then they are liable and that all becomes property of the town. That's public records. Julie says, I noticed during the recap of the town council meeting that Russ was on his phone texting the majority of the time. Is that allowed? He really wasn't paying attention to even what you were saying. I don't think any of them should be on their phones at all during the meeting. I don't know of any laws that make it illegal, but since it was a legal meeting, anything that was happening on his phone should be part of public records. Therefore, that could be subpoenaed, that could be requested, or FOIA'd, or F whatever all those vowels and letters are. I don't know, I can't read, I don't know acronyms. I just want the public information. And if he continues to do it, it continues to become public information. King Taco has a question. He says, can't you just forward all your mail to Otter Creek? Well, I'm sure that comes from the recap video where we've had multiple forwards on our mail. So could we forward our mail to Otter Creek? Yeah, we did last season and it was a nightmare. So we will not ever do that again. As much as you would think the post office has things covered and taken care of appropriately, they fail us time and time and time again. And we utilize them so much. I mean, honestly, George, what do you think we spend in postage a year? $100,000 just in postage, shipping everything from eBay to auctions to buy it nows to claim to fame oh, yeah. it. Easily. Easily. 100000 a year just in postage. They can't get our own letters to us if we put a forward order in. Maureen Wood asked a really good question. In those 6,000 emails, are there any emails about the gallons you were charged? And there is. Now, George and I haven't been through all 6,000 emails. It's a ton of information to process and a ton of reading material. And our days are pretty scheduled with other uh, responsibilities that we have to do. So we've shared the most incriminating one where Mary literally is writing attorney warm and saying hey i screwed up this is a huge issue jeremy is the only and he she doesn't say jeremy she goes one resident is paying a multiplier of two everybody else pays the same price in other words we targeted jeremy we charged him double of what everybody else is paying and we need to fix this and she specifically states what well, you know what let me just read it to you it's a big one. I'm only going to read the part that is about the water rate. Okay, we need to look at amending the water rate resolution as I did what I thought was the option selected. Once the current controversies cool down a little, the current controversies are me saying do the right thing or I'm going to exploit this all over the internet. I'm going to show the world and we'll look at modifications. Russell Meeks thought that all commercial connections would be paying one rate, not based on meter size. And what did they do? They charged me on meter size. She screwed up completely. Okay, and then we passed it on meter size. Previously, everyone paid the same, except one account 
that paid with a multiplier of two. She can't even do the math. They charged me over two. It's 22.50 times times two, right? So that would have been 45. They were charging me 50. I would have been so. It would have been so much simpler to get it into the system the right way if we only had one residential and one commercial rate. They didn't even charge the commercial properties what they were charging me. And I'm a residential property. It doesn't matter on size. You even hear it right here. Size of the meter doesn't matter. Russell Meeks wanted it based on if you were commercial or if you were residential. And they screwed up and they put it in writing on meter size. Their error, their issue, they're going to be held responsible for it. Scott McLaren says, why don't you just run for an office? I know you're not busy enough. You might speed up change around there. Scott, I have no desire to run for a public office whatsoever. That is not in my wheelhouse. I have more than enough things to do, as you already stated. Nor do I have a desire. I don't even think Otter Creek needs public offices. Again, remember, this is a town with 45 houses, 71 voters, maybe 100-plus residents. Uh, you, you understand that's residents that haven't actually uh, signed up for voting. So you have 71 voters as of the last election. It could be less. It could be more this time around. But not everybody is registered to vote. I don't care to run for public office. I don't think you need a public office for people just to treat each other with respect, to do the right thing. You shouldn't have to have a public office for just common courtesy, right? Uh, this is not something that I believe this town needs, me in public office. I'm not even sure at this point they would be okay with voting me into public office because they know there would be a camera on every single meeting, on every single building that the town owned it's accountability and the town needed it the most because they let corrupt people in i have no desire whatsoever to ever run for any office anywhere nancy coleman wants to know was the missing cell phone ever recovered to date to our knowledge that missing cell phone was never recovered but what was found out is there's now two missing cell phones in otter creek you think mary has one and Russ has the other? I don't know. What do you think?